Hello, I'm Andrea Heidloff, Panthera's Vice President, and I'm here today with Dr. Luke Hunter, Panthera's President. Dr. Luke Hunter is one of the world's greatest cat experts. Here at Panthera, he oversees the direction and strategy of Panthera's wild cat conservation programs. Dr. Luke Hunter has contributed to over 100 scientific papers and popular articles, and his latest book, his sixth book, is Carnivores of the World. It's a field guide to all of the 245 species of terrestrial carnivores that exist today. Congratulations, Luke. This is a wonderful uh, project and a wonderful feat. Thanks, Andrea. So this book is a massive project. It's rare in the sense that, does anything else like this exist? No, there, there isn't. It's, I think it's the only field guide of its sort which covers all the terrestrial carnivores on Earth. So that's 245 species. So I had to present all the information that I could in a very concise form on every one of those species. So how do you even begin a process like that? It was a kind of a, a, a huge research activity to begin with. So in fact, the research for the book actually took about three times as long as the writing. The writing sort of, when I really got down to it, took about six months and I spent more than a year and a half actually just compiling all the information I could on what's known about the species that are featured. Um, and in many cases that starts with the scientific literature, what we know and what's been published in all the, the, the science of the species. But that ended up being a sort of a massive process of finding thousands and thousands of publications and then and reading up as much as I could about each of those species until I was comfortable to sit down to write about them. Um, and then this constant engagement, which I think I really benefited from with people who are working on each of these species in the field. So especially the, the animals that we don't know much about, um, but I came across contacts who were the experts, who were doing work that hadn't yet been published, who were un undertaking projects that were, um, that were new and exciting. And I could actually interact with them and they would give me the very latest on it. So as much as possible, I tried to capture that for the book. So what type of information exists for each one of the species listed in this field guide? In each, for each species, I cover the big broad strokes on their behaviour and ecology, so it covers things like distribution and range, habitats they occupy, and then the key elements on things like the feeding ecology, what they eat, you know, how they hunt, um, whether or not they impact people both by killing livestock and in some cases killing people, um, and then as well information on their social and their reproductive ecology, so whether they live in groups, whether they're solitary, and then all the information on breeding, how often they breed, how often they have cubs, um, or pups, how successful they are in raising those things. And then each account will finish with a, a short section on the conservation status of the, of the species because many of them are severely in peril. So it's important to bring that conservation message to the book. Was there any information that you came across while going through the research that was so completely surprising? And I should say first starting with cats. Being a cat expert and one of the world's greatest cat experts, you know everything or seem to know everything really. there is to know about cats. Was there anything really surprising that came out that, that you didn't know? There, there were a number of moments like that, not just for cats, but really with, um, I mean, with all species. But I mean, it was, it was a lovely process. I mean, sometimes just because of the engagement with field scientists and biologists who were, who were coming up with the most current information. And um, even learning, for example, through Andy Hearn, who's a student working on um, Asiatic forest cats in, in Borneo. And um, one of the species he focuses on is the bay cat. And um, when we were compiling information for the book on the bay cat, Andy started sending photographs of this amazing color variation which had never been illustrated. So the bay cat is this rich red color that we've seen photographed before. It's very, very rare and very little known, but there were photographs existing of it. Andy's photographs actually show there's a whole variation that we had no idea about. And so we were able to illustrate it in the book. Um, so there are some, many species where we just know so little about that I think the book um, represents basically all that we know about them. Um, but in other cases, the book actually really only scratches the surface on how amazing some of these species are. And I think the best moment of that is actually um, when I was researching the account on the polar bear. And um, it just, it's just struck me, it was a real eureka moment, the more and more I got to know that species. And they're a well-known species, and I know some about them, but the more I read about them, it's just astonishing to me the ecology of, of being a polar bear. They are an amazing animal. They, um, you know, females can have home ranges up to 600,000 square kilometers. That's, that's almost the size of Texas. You know, an adult in one year can cover that range. Um, at the very end of the book, just when it was going to press, an amazing paper came out on a female polar bear who um, was tracked with a GPS collar, who swam constantly for almost 10 days. And the GPS data let us know finally what they're capable of. 
She covered uh, 687 kilometres, I think. It was nine and a half days she was swimming in water that was between two and six degrees Celsius. And I mean, it's just extraordinary to me that an animal is actually capable of that. And of course, they're incredibly adapted towards it. I just didn't really know the depth of it until I started doing the in-depth research. The, the artist herself is Priscilla Barrett. Her artwork is extraordinary. She's it's, terrific. It's yeah. truly a beautiful field guide. Um, can you talk a little bit about how she came to the project and, and course, her, yeah. her role in, in this book? Pris Priscilla's fantastic. She is, I mean, without exception, I think, the world's leading illustrator of mammals. That's what Priscilla specializes in. And in fact, she's illustrated a number of field guides before this one, um, field guides on um, mammals to Europe, to New Zealand. She's contributed to field guides on mammals of Southeast Asia. So she really is a specialist. And, um, and so she was my first choice for when we came to thinking about the book. And in the discussion with the publisher, um, it turned out that Priscilla was also their first choice. So it was just um, it was a perfect match. But um, she, she is terrific. I think the main problem working with Priscilla is that everyone opens a book and says, oh, it's just beautiful, and the text just never gets a look. But that's OK. It is beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's great. So unlike a lot of field guides, though, this one in particular doesn't include maps. So what we've done, um, maps don't appear in the book, but we've made available new maps online so people can go to Panthera's website and actually download all the maps and the advantage of that is we'll be able to continually update them. So as new information comes in about these species from surveys and activities around the world, we can update them so people will have the field guide for the bulk of the information that's important for its use, but then be able to update the map, uh, download the most up-to-date maps. So what would you say is the lifespan of a book like this that documents so many species that are living in a, in a changing world? I hope the lifespan is pretty long so we don't have to update it too soon, but I think there are some fields of research where they're, they're so rapid and they're evolving so quickly that there will be a need for updates. And, and so for example, just as I was writing the book, um, a sort of a whole bunch of papers came out about some of the relationships between some of these poorly known carnivores. And I mean, one of the most interesting ones was late in 2010, just as the book was going to press, um, it was discovered actually that some populations of the golden jackal, one of the three jackal species in Africa, some populations in Northeast Africa are actually much more closely related to the gray wolf, the same species that lives in North America and most of Eurasia. And so, in fact, the proposal now sitting out there is that those, those populations, they're not a jackal at all, they're actually a wolf, they're an African wolf. And I was able to mention that very briefly in the book, but I can see in a second edition, two or three years from now, when the research and the, and the molecular ecology is known of those animals, that will actually warrant a new species section because it turns out it's actually a different species. Fascinating. After writing this book, which species would you most like to encounter in the wild? Well, I'm mostly a cat specialist, and the big cats and the wild cats are really my thing. So I think the top two would be the snow leopard and the clouded leopard, which are they're the only two large species of cats that I haven't seen in the wild, and they're also the most elusive and most difficult to see. But aside from those two, I think um, it would be another species of cat, the African golden cat, which is endemic to, to Central and West Africa. It only occurs in the, in the rainforest there. And we know very little about that species. It's never been comprehensively studied. It's one of those species in the book about which very little can be written. But um, we're changing that with some new projects that Panthera has started. And so, for example, one of my students in Gabon, Leila Bahahel Din, recently filmed for the first time the African golden cat. We've got this fantastic footage now of this, this lovely little male just sitting in front of a remote camera. And, um, and the first time that we've actually seen the animal in the wild just being a golden cat. So that would be very close to top. Great. And so, again, valuable information. Who who can benefit from, from reading this book? I hope the audience is a general one because it's not a scientific book. There is a lot of scientific info in there, but, but it's presented in a way that I hope is really accessible. So, so it's sort of that, that one-stop shop for anyone who's interested in carnivores. And so you know, that could be students, um, naturalists, professional biologists, um, people going on trips. I think that's the idea of a field guide is now actually they've got the ability to hopefully identify any carnivore species they see in the field and then also actually have quite a lot of information about that animal when they see it. So, um, so I actually hope it has, it has that appeal to a more general audience than the professional audience. Well, thank you, Luke. This has been truly informative. We're, we're all really proud of this accomplishment Thanks. and the amount of information and, and the effort that went into this. Um, you can get your copy now on Amazon.com. 
It's available as of October and you can download the maps at panthera.org and please send us your feedback, send us thoughts, comments, questions for the author to info at panthera.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much.